Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship with us here at First United Methodist Church. So good to see you here in person and to have so many that worship with us online as well. Um, it's a good day to be here. I'm glad you all braved the rain. Um, some of us may have swam in the door, I believe. But rain is always a joy and a blessing and brings us the life that we need in the world around us. We have several announcements coming up this morning. Uh, first off, uh, Dr. Grill has an announcement. Would you share with us, please? Well, I do this. I do this sometimes. I get all tangled. So we get untangled. We go halfway. All right. Uh, several things. First of all, the new upper rooms are here. And uh, sometimes you don't see them because they're around the corner. But I have some, and then in a minute I'm going to ask if anybody wants me to bring one too because I've got the large upper rooms and the small upper rooms, and if there's still others after that, then I'll invite you to go back in the narthex past around the corner and uh, find them. The other thing, we, we have one more Sunday in our adult Bible study. This is the adult Bible studies and transform. There's one more before we start a new book. I encourage you. I know it's hard to get up, but you know, we would love for you to be there. So if anybody wants one for this next Sunday, I've got one, two. And following that, we've got a new set and that set is on freedom and that starts in September, it's the September quarter, and we'd love to have you. Any age, any person, please consider coming. Anybody out there, come, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm not sure why the sound is a little low this morning. It was not when I turned it on, so we'll, we'll do our best. I know, I thought I had it all fixed. Um, Everything is on in the same pattern it was, so I'm not sure what the difference is today, but we'll continue to, to keep checking and I'll talk loud. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, a couple other things coming up uh, today after church. We want to invite uh, anyone who is interested in being a part of our worship planning committee and our faith in the arts uh, work to stay after and be a part of, of uh, that meeting, we'll just move over to the library for that, and we'll um, go through a pretty brief agenda, but I'm hoping that we uh, uh, work through uh, some good and positive things as we restart some of these wonderful ministries that we have a heritage of continuing. Um, we also have a couple things, or, sorry, 4 o'clock today, the trustees are meeting as well. Um, so if you think you're on trustees or you'd like to find out what we do, come join us for that. We'll also be in the library. Um, on Saturday of this week, uh, the youth of our area are invited for a day at Camp Ahistody, and they'll be meeting at Reynolds uh, to take off up that direction for a day of outdoor work and fun. And then at 11 o'clock, um, we'll be having the Tri-Pride Parade and Festival here in Bristol. It's held at uh, the park downtown. And if you would like to participate in being a, a, a loving and kind presence there, there will be a lot of uh, a mixture of folks who show up. And so we hope to be a presence from our church just saying we love you. So uh, we don't have any booth or agenda or uh, anything that we're doing necessarily. We're just going to be present with those folks. If you would like to attend, you do have to uh, come with a ticket. They are free, but you have to come with a ticket. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Email, call, whatever you'd like, and we'll continue to uh, pursue uh, that together. Uh, on Sunday, August 28th, our Administrative Council is meeting, and just really briefly on that, um, we uh, sent out this week in our newsletter um, a follow-up for what we are proposing for the Council, which is simply streamlining all the administrative committees. It doesn't change any of the work of the church, 
or any of the participation of the people, but more takes many of us who don't like administrative work off of the committee we never wanted to be on and allows the council to do work just a little faster. So we're proposing that. Um, we presented it to the council last week. It'll be up for vote on uh, Sunday, or next Sunday at our meeting. If you have any questions, I have posted some of the information about that, uh, linked through our, our e-newsletter, or I have print copies here at Worship at the, the back of the sanctuary as you leave. Um, you can look over the proposal and see if there are any questions, concerns, comments that you have before we uh, find out the will of the council on this. Okay, Whew, lots going on, but that's a good thing. It's good that we have lots starting to happen around us. Um, we'll continue to share upcoming dates in our bulletin, so mark your calendars for things, and, and I hope you enjoy being a part of our time here at first. If you'll stand with me for our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. The Lord forgives all our iniquity and heals all our diseases. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. If you would please turn in your hymnal to hymn selection 731, we will sing glorious things of thee are spoken. And at that time, if you would bring your offerings and your mission offerings and place them in the appropriate vessels.
you'll leave your hymnals open and we'll continue with uh, on page 794 with a responsive reading of Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been an example to many, for you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. Amen. We want to continue with a time of prayer together as we share in praying for one another here in this space, in praying for ourselves and for praying for people around the world, friends and family and those that we don't know. So I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, of ruler of all the heavens, maker of all things that we know and all things that have ever been and all things that ever will be, we lay before you our burdens. We offer to you the lives that we care about. And we pray most of all, Lord, that you be present in our entire world. For the prayers we know to say, and the prayers we do not even know to utter. Lord, hear all our prayers.
All these we offer to you, O Lord, asking your healing, your grace, your peace, and your presence. All these we offer to you, O Lord, knowing that you work in ways we cannot even imagine. And yet we ask, we plead, and we care. Lord, all these we offer to you, along with what we do not know to pray for. We may not know the names and faces, but you, Lord, know the needs of this world. We pray for all who are hungry and go without. We pray for all who fear. We pray for all who suffer from the injustices brought on them by the systems of this world. We pray for all who are held captive by evil. We pray that you pour out your spirit on all these things, big and small, that your redeeming work be done through us, in us, and in this world. And now we pray as Christ first taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Service is underway. 
We're being spiritually fed with just a, a hint of recollection that we have to be out of the building in time to beat the Baptist to lunch. It's okay, I grew up Episcopalian and we also had to beat the Baptists. So I don't think it matters who you are, you just have to beat them to lunch. But the pastor is on point two of the appropriately crafted three-point sermon when suddenly you, there, you, you are set free from your sickness. Hands are laid. And the person straightens up. And suddenly we're praising, maybe unpredictably, shouting, celebrating, crying, laughing. An injury has been healed. Something has happened. But in the middle of the very orderly, predictable worship service. We're no longer linear or organized. And yet there's a beautiful moment of God's grace. Our scripture today lands us in that very scenario where Jesus is teaching. Jesus is a part of what's happening in the synagogue. Jesus is a part of the predictable pattern of Sunday or Sabbath for them, worship. A part of the predictable pattern of teachers taking turns interpreting what has been a part of their generational teaching. When suddenly, it changes. Now being healed from an illness is something that we are called to do as a part of our work as Christians. It's in our heritage throughout scripture from the early days of people following God. God gives the call to us in the New Testament to heal the nations, but God also gives commands in the Old Testament to heal others or, or instructs people one at a time, go follow these particular steps and you will find healing. It's well documented in modern times that even though not everyone gets the same miracle appearing in their life, there are healings as we pray for an illness to disappear for a long time suffering to be relieved. Some of these are prayer healings as we pray over the person. Some of them are declarative healings as we say, you are healed, much like Jesus did. And some of them are medical healings as people use their knowledge and their um, godly given gifts to come up with solutions for what's happening. But whatever it is, when we see and experience and hear talk of a healing, our faith is increased a little bit. I had no idea God could do that. Or I did not expect that to happen. Praise be to the Lord. We also experience healing from bondages, from harmful situations, from harmful people, from lingering trauma in our lives, or from spiritual entrapment that we can't even recognize. Those burdens that we carry that may not seem like a physical problem also need healing. And many times they connect or even cause a physical issue for us. And yet a history of our faith and the history of the United Methodist Church lays in this pattern of healing one another. Camp meetings began as both opportunities to tell people they should be following Jesus, but also to heal one another. And if you haven't been to a crazy camp meeting before, I don't mean crazy like they're crazy. I mean crazy like unpredictable. With a little bit of mm, responsiveness going on. Maybe a little bit of shouting or sharing. Or some hallelujahs and amens coming. Every once in a while, people just can't sit still and they dance around. We should try that one Sunday. Doesn't that sound good? We'll just dance around in here. But in all seriousness, we come from a line of some unpredictable things happening as God redeems lives and heals people. And when that happens, there are unpredictable results at the end of it. Now, regardless of the causation of your hurts, We've all had a need for some healing. 
In the scripture today, this woman, 18 years she suffered. Doubled over crooked back. 18 years. And for many eras, the church claimed that a lingering illness or a physical deformity is either your sins or the sins of your parents and grandparents. As in, someone acted terribly, either you or the people you come from, therefore you are cursed. For many eras of the church, that has been ingrained in folks because some bits of it can be true. Not all of it, now hold on, but some bits of it can be true. We do carry burdens that come from our own choices. We do carry burdens, sometimes from the choices of the people we come from. Maybe their poor decisions, maybe their health choices, maybe their addictions, their traumas. And we can carry burdens from all the non-choices that all of us have, just in our genetics. But, I say that with the sometimes on it. That's only sometimes that we can trace it to somebody's fault. Because imagine if we assumed that every lingering illness or traumatic injury was due to a sin. Imagine if a thing that you'd been going to the doctor for for years and years and years that you just couldn't quite get resolved. Suddenly everyone looked at you and said, well, you just must not be praying hard enough. Well, what did you do to cause this? Well, you got to get right with God before it's fixed. Well, you must have done something terrible. Or did your, your parents offended God? The woman in the scriptures today, 18 years she had suffered from the physical pain. But 18 years she had suffered that kind of attitude towards her. Well, what did you do to cause this? Well, why are you not healed yet? Well, you must not be right with God. Have you prayed hard enough yet? <clears throat> verse 11 says she was disabled by a spirit. In verse 16, when Jesus is talking about her, he says she was bound by Satan for 18 long years. And whether her illness really could be traced to someone's poor choices, or if it was just simply an injury or a weakness in her muscle or bone structure that continued to cause problems for her, for 18 years, she'd struggled from the physical and the cultural designation that she was not good enough. I want you to sit in that for a moment because I think our scripture takes us to two places today. It takes us to this place of redemptive healing, but it also takes us to the place of suffering alongside this woman and the people who treated her like that. The physical struggles alone can be hard enough to bear, but the societal treatment on top of that on top of whatever people see as other or wrong or not good enough for God. That's a whole other layer of healing that we need. For this woman, after Jesus calls her out in the middle of a mundane and normal service, now everything is different. And we don't know if she came in that day hoping that this would happen, that today would finally be the day. Or if she simply came in just to be present before God. We know nothing of her story except these few verses where she's mentioned. And yet on that day, everything became different. She gets to rejoice that some doors are open. Physically, it's a new life. Spiritually, it's a new life. It's hard not to believe in God when something like that happens to you. But relationally, it's also a new life. So I want to 
take a moment before we deal with Jesus' other hard truth in this and just pray for some healing. Will you join me as we pray? Lord God, we offer to you our own struggles, our own hurts. Some of us spend so much time praying for others that we forget to claim that you can heal us too. So Lord, we lift to you our long-term illnesses. We lift to you our injuries that won't go away. We lift to you all the hurts and struggles of daily life. And we lift to you all the emotional and spiritual burdens that could also use some healing. Heal us, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Heal us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal us, Lord, that we may continue as your witness and your people in this world. Amen. Jesus' declaration was, woman, stand straight. So I say to you, people of God, stand straight. Be healed. And yet, that's not the end of the story. If you'll return with me to our beginning image, where we might be in the middle of, say, our sanctuary as this is going on. And as the person is healed, I mean, I don't know, go ahead. If, if you are claiming the healing right now, I have no idea what God might be doing for you, but we'll, we'll go for it. But if you, you want to claim the healing right now, then we're probably all starting to feel a little better. Somebody may be ready to jump up and down. I mean, you got a, a bum knee that gets healed. You're ready to see what it can do, right? You've got a back that's been doubled for a very long time. You're ready to see how far you can bend. And so this woman is trying out her new movement. The people who probably brought her to worship that day or to the sanctuary that day are sharing with her. And then it's almost like some well-meaning person. I don't know how well-meaning. But maybe well-meaning in terms of how long has this been going on for. Pulls the pastor aside. Come on, pastor. What is this? I mean, can we wrap it up now? Some of us have places to be. I mean, couldn't this have waited for like a private moment? Couldn't you have taken care of this in your office later? That's not a, not a big deal. It's not too much to ask. I mean, couldn't this have waited for another day? Some of us came here to worship, and this is not printed on the order. The law forbids working on Sunday or on the Sabbath day. Couldn't this have waited for another time? Honestly, I think the person... Pointing this out to Jesus was even a little more rude than that. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, though, by saying they said it quietly and to the side. Because they are feeling inconvenienced. This is not our norm. This is not our expected timing. This is not our worship. They are feeling like the rules of faithful living have been broken. But I thought that we couldn't do that. I, isn't it a sin to do this on Sabbath? I mean, even though it's a miracle, is it also a sin? I don't know what's going on. And then they have to deal with how the life of this person that they've walked by day after day, because folks who couldn't work in this society would have to sit out and daily ask for alms, for change to be thrown their direction. And it was part of their culture that you knew that was how those folks were supported. So you handed them money directly on a regular basis. It was built into how their society ran. So they walked past her on a daily basis while she collected what she needed to survive. And now suddenly they're looking at someone whose life is going to be dramatically different than the person they've always known. How are we going to deal with her now that she's not that sinful lady with the bent back? How are we going to deal with her now that she is one of us now? Now, please don't hear me that I'm saying when you're broken, you're not one of us. Because us is every child of God. Amen. But sometimes we put our foot in it a little bit. 
and treat others like just because they don't look like you or they can't move like you or they can't speak like you, that therefore they are less. But Jesus sets the tone in his rebuke by saying to them, hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or your donkey from its stall and leave it out to get a drink? I mean, in other words, don't you pass out bulletins, fix the coffee, teach Sunday school, usher, hint, 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 we should start ushers, hint, hint, we need some folks to usher. Don't you frequent restaurants or shops or gas stations where employees are working on the Sabbath? Don't you feed yourselves or your children or your pets or your livestock? Don't you clean up something that's spilled on a Sunday or do you let it sit for a whole day because you can't work on that day? I mean, many of us go home and mow our lawns on Sunday afternoon. If you are willing to do such mundane things, things on a day that should be honoring the Lord. Jesus continues with his statement in verse 16, which says, Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham bound by Satan for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage on the Sabbath day? Woman, stand straight. You have nothing to be ashamed of. People who would judge, stand straight. Stand straight if you've been healed yourself. But stand straight also so that you can look those who need healing in the eye with the look that Jesus gives not judging their past or their decisions, not arguing with their fitness to be present among you, not demeaning their abilities, and not questioning how it interrupts our normal flow. Stand straight instead alongside those who may not be able to. As we all say together, woman, man, child of God, you are set free. Amen. If you'll stand with me for our final song for today, our hymn of benediction, Lord of the Dance, found in your hymnal on page 261.
hear my uh, son over here singing that song the way we've sung it for many years in Methodist camping ministries with a few shouts and cheers and rejoicing Amen. about dancing. Yes. It's really fun. So folks, go now in the peace and power of the one who heals us so we may live, we may dance, and we may stand straight. Amen.